Another trick with slope generators is that they're easy to turn into LFOs. Some of them require extra patching, some of them have that feature built in. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my initial settings because I'd like to know where I'm starting from. I've got these tweaked to some strange values. Rise and fall can take minutes and you don't know what's going on. You think the whole thing's stalled. And anyway, the simplest way to make a slope generator loop or repeat is to take its end of cycle output and put it back to its trigger input. So let's go ahead and patch up my little green side over here. It's output to my green signal over here. Take my LFO cutoff, that cable right there, patch it from that, and then run my end of cycle to my trigger end. And immediately, you see we've got a waveform happening here. I'm going to put the Moog in drone mode. Pretty fast. I can slow it down. Create a sawtooth. Triangle-like modulation. This is unipolar modulation. But what's really cool is the second side of the DUSG. I'm going to switch down to magenta just so you can see color-coded-wise what's going on. Well, the second side has a BP out, and that's not bandpass, that's bipolar, which means it's a little bit more centered around zero volts like you would expect an LFO to be. You see it starts off a bit raised here. It's basically taking the EG output of this and offsetting it in voltage. Now, I'll take my end of cycle to my trigger in. And now you see it's a little bit more centered around my green zero volt line there. As I change the cycles, balance will change a little bit. So that's what the BP is all about, bipolar output. And it comes particularly handy when we want to use this as a VCO, which we will in a little bit. I'm going to go back to my green side here, just because it's frankly easier for me to reach. Yeah, take my output. A common modification made to surge modular systems was to go ahead and put a switch that automatically connected end to trigger in. And that's what the cycle switch is on the random source version. So now, if you happen to have a version with that internal wiring, you can get an LFO without any external patching. And once again, these rise and fall times can be used to affect the shape. I'll go into exponential. Start bending this around. So it's easy to create some different shapes out of this just by playing around with these exponential variations. And there's a truncated shape as well. Right. Turn off the drone for a second. Well, as we found with envelopes, if one's good, two is even better. So let's go ahead and mix together the two sides. And just like we could have one side trigger the other side, we can do the same thing here with the LFO mode. But we do need to externally mix the two outputs together. Or you can go ahead and treat this as two LFOs that go to two different things offset in time. It's up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and show the mix output because that's easier. I'm going to go ahead and put my mix at 100% for both. There we go. Run my green side into the green input. Run the magenta side. Red side based on that LED to the magenta input on data. And into my mixer. And initially we just had the left side firing to the cycle. I'm actually going to take that switch out of the circuit, go back into drone mode here for a second. To have these two work as a more complex LFO shape, you need to have one trigger the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and take the end of cycle pulse from the first one and go to the trigger in on the other side and take its end of cycle pulse and go to the trigger in on the first side. Now I've got these two LFOs firing one after the other. And again, I can play with the timings and play with the shapes. And just as 
because we had voltage controlled envelope times, we could have voltage control over our LFO times by taking advantage of these VC inputs. And you know what oscillating thing likes voltage control? VCOs. Let's set that up next.